Right, let's take you to the Northwest now, where the Deputy Health Minister and the Northwest Health MEC are visiting a hospital in Clerkstorp where a doctor has tested positive for COVID-19. They're briefing the media now. In this regard, so with us, we have the CEO of the hospital. They are referred to as managers, hospital managers. He does not want to be disciplined by life uh, by t saying that his CEO is CEO, but is hospital man a hospital manager in their language. So I'm sure that because of that, what we have been told first is that this happened on a medical doctor who has contacts. They told us that contacts 44 employees and then 56 uh, patients. And that everything that has to be done in terms of contact tracing, they did it, he will explain. And that now where we are as government, we're checking gaps, if there are any gaps, but also checking the response, quick response, of the private uh, facilities who are involved in this instance, but also working towards ensuring that both us and them now do proper work in terms of contact handling going forward. Because remember, we each time tell you that health is not public or private. It is health for all South Africans and people who are in our boundaries. The people who have came here are residents in areas where local government is. So they become community members outside a hospital, both the patients and the workers. Outside work, they are community members. So we have a responsibility for them, irrespective of where they work. That's why we are moving. So I would give him first and then give the deputy minister uh, after him in terms of at least details of what had happened and what they have done so far. Thank you. Do you want to take us to the patient? Okay. Just briefly, so at Life Healthcare, the importance of our patients is the utmost, uh, utmost importance of uh, our patients and doctors. So we've taken the necessary precautions in hospital um, to protect our, our staff and the doctors working in our facility. Thank you. Oh God. Thank you. No, thanks, thanks, MEC, and thanks to Mr. Lucas Hrip uh, and the team, uh, our uh, fellow uh, MECs who are present here. Indeed, as the MEC said, uh, I'm here on behalf of the national ministry and department and national government, uh, one, to give support to our provincial health department and the provincial northwest provincial government in the joint effort uh, of making sure that we can continue to prevail over this uh, big uh, enemy of uh, COVID-19, uh, the invisible enemy, as our leadership uh, have said. So my presence here was really to give them support to get the report in terms of where we are uh, in the screening, uh, be with them, but also in terms of the challenges, which uh, as, a, as, as, a, as, as a health fraternity, and specifically here in the Northwest, the kind of challenges, and, and they then briefed me on the immediate challenge which uh, uh, Ancron Hospital uh, has, has encountered. So we indeed had a, a very thorough briefing from the management and also from uh, our own uh, Department of Health here in the province. What is clear is that the challenge which this hospital is facing, um, it's not unique. It's something which we are all going to have to, to deal with as we move forward. Um, because as, as the MEC has, ma has mentioned, uh, the, the manager didn't go into uh, detail, is the fact that the background of it is that um, a specialist, a doctor, uh, you know, had some mild symptoms, um, went for a testing, symptoms which were not even that your typical uh, COVID-19 I mean, uh, all of you will be familiar with the fact that we talk about fever, we talk about cough, we talk about shortness of breath, um, general body pain, 
in a way, in terms of how this uh, uh, doctor presented, it's more in the area of the general body pain rather than the, the top uh, symptoms. And there was a suspicion. He went for testing and confirmed then that indeed he was positive for COVID-19. But by the time that was confirmed, um, because he had hardly had any typical symptoms, not even uh, uh, even the background, as you would know, of uh, traveling, uh, either other parts of the country a lot. He had been outside the country, I mean the province, uh, for a conference, but that was also quite uh, uh, confusing because he, it was almost a month ago when when he developed the symptoms. So typically, therefore, with that lack of uh, very clear symptoms and signs, the doctor had been working. I mean, the private doctor, even if he was a public health doctor, he would still have been on duty. So he saw a number of patients, interacted with uh, colleagues uh, in, uh, in three hospitals, uh, in three hospitals all in all. So once it's confirmed, uh, the doctor was uh, isolated, and as, as actually got isolated in the very same hospital. Uh, it's, it's in isolation here at the hospital. And, of course, then the contact tracing, as the MEC has said, uh, out of which were 44 um, health healthcare workers uh, and, and then also with the 56 patients. So I'm quite satisfied with the report in terms of the work which has been done uh, by uh, our, our health officials, both in, in the uh, private hospitals, the three private hospitals, the steps which they have taken in terms of uh, uh, tracing, you know, the contacts in terms of the healthcare workers, the colleagues, and also uh, the patients who have been traced. Uh, out of the 56 uh, uh, patients, they have been able to get 50. They are following up on the six. So our team from the province will be working with uh, the, the, uh, the, the private hospital here to make sure that also the six can be found. And, and necessary steps are being taken in terms of making sure that all the 44 staff members are, are, are in, in, in isolation, self-quarantine, those who have facilities, those who don't have facilities uh, are being looked after by the state. And then the, the same thing with, with, the, with the patients. And the steps which they have taken also to decontaminate the various health facilities in the three hospitals, uh, the maternity wards, the theatres, and all that. So we were satisfied with the in intervention which they have made. There are a few areas which, uh, from the province side, uh, the team led by our uh, uh, senior uh, person here, uh, Prof. Uh, Luke, they will be following up on some areas just to tighten up, including the six remaining uh, patients, and also just in terms of some areas where the information may not be complete, they will be doing that. But what we have said to them also is that uh, um, we must take this as a lesson. It's, it's ongoing lessons for all of us. I mean, five months ago, we never knew that we'll be in this kind of situation. So nobody, I mean, has a real uh, a kind of, you know, uh, an experience in this matter. We're all learning from each other from throughout the world, guided by the World Health Organization and uh, experience from other countries. So in this kind of experience which has happened here builds up on our experience going forward in terms of planning. How do we protect our healthcare workers in terms of making sure that, uh, because there are instances where the healthcare workers will get uh, the transmission of the virus from patients they are treating. How do we also, in reverse also, make sure that uh, the patients are protected from the healthcare workers who then get, uh, who contract the disease. How do you protect the institution? Because you can imagine, I mean, um, you know, if, if, if we don't come with very uh, strong improved measures, if, if and when, because uh, our epidemiologists are telling us that it's not a question of if, but it's a question of when, the numbers will go up. So if, if, if we don't get improvement uh, in terms of making sure that uh, now when the numbers are still small, here in the Northwest we're talking about 19 confirmed cases. If we can, if we must learn when the numbers are still small to say, in future when the numbers go up and spring up everywhere, how do we make sure that we protect the healthcare practitioners, 
protect the patients, protect the institutions, because it will be a, it will be a disaster if, as the numbers rise and we need more facilities, if more and more facilities have to close, uh, because we have not been able to protect them. You can imagine, and then also if more and more health practitioners, healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, and paramedic uh, and, and other support staff, staff, pharmacists, physiotherapists, and so on, if many more of them get into the danger, then, you know, as the disease rise, then there will be a disaster. So it's a learning curve, and we are quite happy with the steps which they have taken. And um, uh, as a national uh, uh, ministry, we indeed will continue to work together and give them the necessary support. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Minister. Thank you, Deputy Minister. We are going to allow questions from members of the media. Uh, let's have five ago. The first round, let's have five questions. Uh, I suggest you, you state the media institution that you come from. And secondly, you tell us. And that was the Deputy Health Minister and the Northwest Health MEC at the Wilmard Hospital, where a doctor has tested positive uh, for coronavirus. Uh, we'll bring you more details on that story throughout the day here on ENCA.